A responsible king was always approachable by his citizens. Generally, the citizens, great and common, all had an aspiration to see the king and take benediction from him. The king knew this, and therefore, whenever he met the citizens, he immediately fulfilled their desires or mitigated their grievances. In such dealings, a responsible monarchy is better than a so-called democratic government in which no one is responsible to mitigate the grievances of the citizens who are unable to personally meet the supreme executive head. In a responsible monarchy, the citizens had no grievances against the government, and even if they did, they could approach the king directly for immediate satisfaction. 要旨，有责任心的君王总是很容易让他的国民接近。绝大多数的国民，无论地位高低，一般都渴渴望见到君王，从他那里得到祝福。君王了解这一点，因此无论何时遇到国民，都立刻满足他们的愿望，或设法减轻他们的不满情绪。就有关这种交流，一个负责任的君主政府，比所谓的民主政府要强。因为在民主政府中，没人自己承担减轻国民不满情绪的责任，国民也无法自己面对最高的行政职位。在负责任的君主政府中，国民对政府没有要反抗的不满情绪，即使有，在他们直接去找君王后，也立刻得到满足。Tasmay Sri Guru Venama, Sri Chaitanya Manohisam, Swami Ramya Nabhutale, Swayam Rupa Gadama Yam Gadani Swapadan Tikam, Vandeham Sri Guru Sri Yuta Madakamalam, Sri Guru Vaishnavam Sa. Shivam Sagrajatam Sahagana Rajatam Kitam Tanasajinam Sahagam Sahagam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padana Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishnu Tanjaya Hey Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Tapta Nanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishamanu Sude Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakarva Tarunyasya Vāsindhūrya-e-vata-pāthitā-nam-pāmane-vyo-vaśna-ve-vyo-namo-namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nikya
Just like in Ramayana, we see some interesting examples of this. Lord Ramachandra is Mayada Avatara. He's an incarnation of the Lord to exhibit perfect etiquette. So it is described in Ramayana that at one point Lord Rama was uh, engaging all the monkeys like Hanuman to build the bridge over to Lanka. And Hanuman, being a very powerful personality, he was bringing big, bold, big rocks and boulders and helping to place them to construct the bridge over Kalanka. But there was a little spider who also wanted to help. And the spider was carrying some grains of sand to try to help. So Hanuman saw the spider, told the spider, get out my way, you know, don't block the way. You, 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 you can't help much in this effort. We we will do it. But Lord Ramachandra heard the Hanuman's remark and he told Hanuman, he said, no, no, I said, this spider is also my devotee. He also wants to render service. So even though the spider was serving in a very small way, Lord Ramachandra understood the devotion of the spider was as great as the devotion which was there in the other people like the big, the big bears, monkeys. And Srila Prabhupada in the purport talks about how the ideal monarch 
will be willing to listen to any complaints from any unsatisfied citizen in his kingdom. So it's described that in the past tense of Lord Ramachandra, Lord Ramachandra, when he was a king, he had that policy. Anyone could come, anyone who had any complaint, they could come and tell Lord Ramachandra what they could complain, and he would try his best to satisfy them. But usually everyone was so satisfied, there were no complaints. Nobody ever came to complain. So this is called, this is government of Lord Ramachandra is famous even today. It is known as Rama Raja. It of the, the kingdom of Lord Rama, where everyone is fully happy and satisfied. Every, but today people, they aspire to have the kingdom like that. They, they, they aspire to have that kind of government where Lord Ramachandra is the ruler. But Srila Prabhupada points out, if they want that kind of government, they have to want to have Lord Ramachandra also. You cannot just have the government without Lord Ramachandra. Or as another person said, people want the kingdom of God without God. So, so we cannot have the kingdom of God without God. You want to have the kingdom of God, first you have to accept God. It's also described that one day a dog came to complain. And the dog had been beaten by someone and he was badly injured. And so Bharat was there at the door and Bharat saw the dog and questioned the dog what had happened and he brought the dog to see Lord Ramachandra. And then Lord Ramachandra saw the dog and asked the dog what had happened to him. And the dog explained, he said, I was beaten by this one Brahman. So Lord Ramachandra had that this some Brahmana had beaten the dog and he ordered his men, go find this Brahmana and bring him to me. So the Brahmana was brought before Lord Ramachandra and Lord Ramachandra then questioned the Brahmana about did you beat this dog? Are you the one who did this? And the Brahmana convinced, he said, yes, I do. So then the Brahmana explained, he said, I was begging, I was begging for food, 
Every day I'm a Brahmana, I'm allowed to beg, and I was begging, nobody was giving me any food. The whole day I've been going hungry, so I was very hungry. And then this dog came and got in my way, I was angry and beat it. Uh you have to get some, you have to receive some punishment for this behavior. So Lord Ramachandra, he said, he said, this Brahmana, that you should become the head of the ashram. So if people were standing around and they thought, is that a punishment that we want to make him the head of the ashram? And the dog, the dog replied, he said, yes, he said, it's a good punishment. He said, in my last life, I was the head of the ashram. <laughs> and when I was the head of the ashram, I used to get angry at people and shout at them and push them. And, so, and the result is now you see a bit of body of the so if this Brahmana becomes the head of the ashram, then he will have to be responsible for all the people and he will have to know how difficult it is to manage it. He will exhibit his anger and the result of his anger will cause him to be degraded. So it is said there are <coughs> there are three things which are very difficult to manage. One is taking care of the ashram, the other taking care of the deities, and the other is taking care of cow. If we don't take, take care of the devotees, if we don't take, take care of the deities, if we don't take care of cows, then certainly you will get severe reaction. And so it's a very serious responsibility to take care, to have others under your care and to look after them. It is said the king will take one sixth of the karma of the entire country. Whatever reactions are done in the kingdom, the the ruler has to take one-sixth of all of the sinful reactions. 
，无论在他的王国当中发生了什么样的业报反应，这个国王呢，至少这个国王要承担六分之一的罪恶反应。So in Srimad Bhagavatam, we read about things like Maharaj Parikshit, how he was traveling around the kingdom, and when he saw someone who was beating a cow, and the bull, the bull was on one portion of one leg only, another cow had tears in her eyes, and there was a person dressed like a sudra, dressed like a king, but he was obviously not a king; he was a sudra. And so Maharaj Parikshit was ready to take that person and punish him. When Parikshit was in the middle of his kingdom, he found a place where the king was abused and the king was abused. The king was abused and the king was abused. And the king was abused and the king was abused. And the king was abused and the king was abused. And the king was abused and the king was abused. Maharaj Parikshit would not allow even the cow to be unprotected. Parikshit 的王甚至都不能容忍一头母牛没有受到保护。And so that is the duty of the monarch, of the head of the state. He has to be protected for all the citizens, and the citizens are not only the humans, but also all living entities. 所以，这个嗯，君主，君主呢，他就有责任负责保护所有的他的臣民，不光是人类，还包括动物在内。So it's very wrong for the productive states to uh encourage to allow slaughterhouses of animals, because the animals are also citizens of the state, and they should be protected by the state. 所以，一个君君王，他允许在他的国家内开设屠宰场，这是一个犯下非常的一天大错。因因为这些动物呢，也一样应该受到保护的照料。So Maharaj, who、uh, loved Ramachandra, he was he was that kind of king. He made sure everyone was protected, and similarly, Maharaj Prithu made sure that every living entity in his kingdom. Is properly cared for and satisfied. Lord Ramachandra is such a noble, high-minded king, and Prithu Bhagwan is the same. He ensures that in his kingdom, every living being, every living entity, is properly cared for and satisfied. And he would be willing to give benedictions to all the citizens. So we also, as devotees, people often come to devotees and they want blessings. So we should also be willing to give blessings to people. We are as devotees, we often come to devotees and they want blessings. So we should also be willing to give blessings to people. We are as devotees, we often come to devotees and they And the proper blessing to give is thought to us by Sri Caitanya Mahaprabhu that he will bless people. Krishna Nadir Vastu, may you always be in Krishna consciousness. 正确的祝福呢，是主彩蛋的妈妈他不所示范的那样，愿你永远具有 Krishna 之觉。So as devotees. You know, we should understand what it means to give a blessing. We bless people. But may you always remember Krishna. May you always remain in Krishna consciousness. In the past times of Hari Das Thakur. There's an interesting example, and Haridas Thakur had been arrested by the Muslim ruler, and he was brought to the jail. And there were other prisoners there in the jail. And when they saw Haridas Thakur, they also approached Haridas Thakur and asked Haridas Thakur for blessings. So, when Haridas Thakur was being arrested by the Muslim ruler, he was brought to the jail. 这些犯人们都很高兴
都来到哈利达斯他父面前呢，祈求得到他的祝福。And Harry does that for bless them. May you remain as you are. 哈利达斯他父就祝福他们说，嗯，愿你们保持你们现，保持你们的现状。So they felt very disappointed to hear this blessing from Haridas Stakho, but Haridas Stakho explained to them why he had given them this blessing. 当囚犯们听到哈达斯塔库的这番祝福后，都感到非常的失望。但是哈达斯塔库呢，就向他们解释了他的祝福含义。He told them, he said that now you're here in this situation. You have no hope of, you have no chance of sense gratification. So I'm, I'm, I'm address you that you will remain in that condition without sense gratification. 哈达萨库说，因为你们的呃这种现状呢，使得你们都没有机会从事打官享乐，而我呢，给给你们这些祝福，是让你们继续保持处在这种。If you are released from this situation, you get out of this this jail. Then you immediately be thinking to enjoy your senses. You want material pleasures, and you will engage in more sinful activities. 一旦你们从监狱当中被释放出去的话，你们就立刻想要。从事感官享乐，从而嗯满足感官，从而招致更多的不好。But here in this jail, you have no hope of sense gratification. So this is a very good situation for you. So I bless you that you can remain in this condition. 在监狱当中呢，你们就没有机会从事感官享乐，所以我祝福你们，呃，让你们能继续呢。It is said that at one point Lord Vishnu came to Maharaj Prithu and offered Maharaj Prithu a benediction, whatever he wanted to his hands. 有一次，主位是某个显现在嗯马哈拉的宗主的嗯祭祀场，就问他想要什么样的祝福。So Maharaj Peter said to Lord Vishnu, he told him, I, I just want to accept whatever you like to give me. And Maharaj Peter explained that I'm happy to receive what Ever you think is good for me, I accept your desire, not my desire. Sri Tu Guang said, "I'm very happy to receive what you want to give me, regardless of what you want to give me. I will accept your desire." So that is the mode of the pure devotee. But they have no material desire. They simply surrender to the Lord. This is a pure devotee's mind. They have no material desire. They simply surrender to the Lord. This is a pure devotee's mind. They have no material desire. They simply surrender to the Lord. This is a pure devotee's mind. They have no material desire. They simply surrender to the Lord. This is a pure devotee's mind. They have no material desire. They simply surrender to the Lord. This is a pure devotee's mind. They have no material desire. They simply surrender to the Lord. Birth after birth, so he does not even desire liberation. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, um, in the Ashram Gate, he said he does not want wealth, he does not want to be a slave, he does not want to be a slave. He only wants to be a slave and be free. He only wants to be a slave and be free. The desire for liberation is inferior to the desire for devotion itself. 主小他娘，他也没有解脱的愿望，因为比起奉献福的愿也愿望，解脱的愿望是要低于奉献福的。One who is engaged in devotional service is understood they are already liberated. 嗯，一个已经从事奉献福的人被认为是已经得到了解脱了。Devotional service begins on the platform of liberation. 奉献服务。
And that is described in the Bhagavad Gita. Brahma Buddha Prasanatma Nasochati Nakanchati. Sama Sarveshu Bhuteshu Mabhati Prabhati Sara. That's when you understand that they are Brahman, that they are still souls, then they are a joyful soul. So they have understood their spiritual nature, that they're not the body, so they have no material desire. And they see all living entities equally. They don't make distinction between one person and another. They see everyone on an equal platform. They don't think, oh, this person is high class, this person is low class. But they see everyone as a spiritual being, part and parcel of Lord Krishna. And they don't anchor or lament for any. So in that condition, then they can engage in proper devotion of Maharaj Pitu, as a king, he, he showed the perfect example, the perfect behavior. And he was able to rule the kingdom in a very successful manner. I got any questions? Yes, yes, Krishna Mai. What's the question? Why? Why is Krishna not helping his best friend at all? You want Krishna to do everything? Best friend people at all. Everything. And we see that Krishna being in Jida. Krishna takes care of his own cow. Everyone has to take care of their own cow. Actually, this planet belongs to the cow. And we are, we are meant to serve them. The deity that the deity of this planet is Mother Bhumi, and she's in the form of a cow, and she's showing us how this planet is actually meant for the cows. And we're here, we're meant to serve the cow. So 
So one way in which we can serve the cows is by distributing Prabhupada's books. Because Prabhupada's books explain about the importance of the cows. Wait, wait, is there a mic? Yes, you're right, yeah. We come to Krishna consciousness, of course, we don't come with pure motivation. We all come for different reasons. Atto jinnata atta ki jani chan ta to ta ta ta. The atto, people in distress, people in such well, people are curiosity, and sometimes people come in such of knowledge. And so we come to Krishna consciousness, uh, we come to, we surrender, but our surrender, you couldn't say it's really on the platform of pure devotion. It's mixed with desire, you know, passion, and even ignorance. We, we have to come to that platform of pure devotion to serve Krishna, to serve Krishna properly. We want to come to that level that we understand that we're not the body and that we see everyone equally and we don't hang for our men. We should come to we should develop, we should come to that level. Then we can properly render devotion outside. So it takes some time. We we come we and and do service. We do service. We could say, is it pure devotional service? Well, we, it might be a little pure in the beginning, but one devotee. One, one of our scholarly devotees, Rabindra Sarup Prabhu, he, he describes that often when we come, in the beginning our devotional service is, is, is very, very nice, that we, we appreciate all the other devotees, and we have a high regard for everyone, and we think they're all great devotees, and you know, we really appreciate that all oh, the, the devotees are so nice and in the beginning. 
But gradually, as it goes on, we start to find faults and see faults, and, and then we have doubts about people, and, and then when we start to find faults with the devotees, then that really influences and harms our devotional service. Because then it becomes sadhu ninda. You know, we were hearing from Bhama Swami about offenses to devotees. So the more we have a, a respectful attitude towards the devotees, then the easier it is to advance in Krishna consciousness. But we do want to be aware of what is the standard of pure devotion. Pure devotion in which no material desire. And if we're just thinking about our own liberation, or maybe we want to get free of our own sinful reactions, but, well, that is also not pure devotion. That's simply the mode of improvement. So, this is in, in the third canto, Dr. Pila teaches how devotional service can be influenced by the most. Of course, it is. You know, although we may be doing devotional service, it can be influenced by the most. We, we can be in the mode of passion, ignorance, or goodness. But pure devotional service requires certain standards, certain characteristics of the detail. Anu Kuyena Krishna no Shilanam Bhakti Uttama. Then Rupa Goswami describes that pure devotional service is performed without any desire for liberation and without any fruitive desire. So Rupa Goswami is it is performed simply for the pleasure of Krishna. every moment. So, you know, pure devotional status is a very high, high level. And we're, and we're on the track, we're trying, we're practicing, we do devotional service in practice, sadhana bhakti. The rules and regulations are all there to try to help us. So to get rid of the, uh, the offenses and the, to get rid of the passion and the ignorance and, and to, to come to that level of pure goodness, it takes practice. 
，所所以要摆脱激情属性，呃，愚昧属性，要达想要达到更高层面的话，是需要练习的。And you all practice in this in this material world. We are serving Krishna. We talk about service to Krishna, but our service to Krishna, of course, it's going to be influenced by our and our passion and our ignorance, our own problems. We are talking about serving Krishna, serving Krishna. We are in this material world, still in the process of practicing. 我们的奉献服务受到激情影响，受到音乐的影响。嗯、OK， 还没有问题吗？其他问题吗？还有其他其他什么好玩的？奉献者给一个祝福都是有其他祝福，永远保持其他祝福都有祝福。当我们接受这个祝福的时候，怀着怎样的一个心态呢？嗯，啊，尤其是 the blessings from Sadhu, not always remember Krishna and always be in Krishna consciousness. Uh, when we receive that uh blessing, uh, in what kind of mood should we receive the blessing? Oh, we should be in a joyful mood. That's uh. 在那种非常喜乐的心态当中接受这个祝福。应该感激这位圣人，非常感谢您，您对我太仁慈了。嗯。You want that blessing? 你你你想要这个祝福吗？嗯。Lord Chaitanya got cursed by one Brahmana. That he would never enjoy material life. The Lord Chaitanya thought, "Oh, very nice." Chu Chaitanya, 曾经被一位佛门诅咒说，永远不能享受物质的生活。Chu Chaitanya 心想，他想，那太棒了。Right, that's a nice way to be cursed. Right. 这是是一个很好的被诅咒，很好的诅咒。Any other question? Oh, yes. Okay. My question is, uh, what is the question is, what thing and the spirituality is the different things or this is the same? Bhakti and spirituality. Is, is bhakti and spirituality, is it the same thing or is it the other different? Bhakti, but spirituality could mean many things. Someone may be an impersonalist, they're also spiritual. 灵性主义呢，就嗯是嗯，就比如说非人格主义者，他也可以被称为是灵性主义。Spirituality can simply mean detachment from the material. 呃，灵性主义就意味着它是弃绝了物质。But bhakti is means devotion to Lord Krishna. 而 bhakti 奉爱意味着对 Krishna 的奉献。So the not the same. 所以，把体重爱成佛不是非常的纯粹，所以，呃，如果有的时候我们能够成佛，能够去遵循功德教导，有的时候做不到，应该怎么办
Well, you have to keep trying. If at first you don't sit, you don't succeed, you don't give up, right? Certainly in the beginning will be difficult. Things are difficult. We say why should I go now? Right? Everything is difficult in the beginning. So certainly devotional service in the beginning is going to be difficult. There will be things which are, we will be challenged. But it will be times we cannot we cannot meet the the standards which are actually required. It's all okay, but we don't give up. You know, we keep going. I have to understand that I'm a conditioned soul. I have my limitations. I do what I can. I'm trying. You know, I have to keep trying. So okay. So things sometimes we kind of do things we, sometimes we you want to be, you know, a, a, a wonderful example, you want to do everything perfectly, but it just gets too much. And sometimes you just need to have it. You just need to let go. Okay, yeah, we have to understand what, what level we're at in, in our own practice. And we have to be patient. And at the same time, enthusiastic and determined. And you know, in, in the Upadesha and Vika Prabhupada explains these three things, enthusiasm, patience and determination are, are needed for everything. <laughs> Ta 我们得努力 so in our devotional service, we can't expect immediately we're going to be pure devotees. We're going to have problems, it's going to be things, we're going to be things we're not able to do. But we're trying, we're practicing. Do, do our best, do what we can, and, and hope that in the future, as we go on, we can do better. But you must have that enthusiasm, that's an important quality, and patience as well, you know, can't expect if you know we're going to be great to feel devoted immediately. But Krishna will help us gradually we can go on and come to a better level to keep trying to come to a higher level. Krishna will bangjuanda. The spiritual master may ask you to do something, you may not be able to do it. Just like Prabhupada's spiritual master, when he walked in the door, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati said, You're a nice young person, why don't you preach the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? And 
and, and Prabhupada was immediately shocked to well, I, I'm just a young man, I'm just married, I've got ch a young child, you know. How can I teach the message of Lord Chaitanya? And Prabhupada argued about the political situation in India. He said, India, our country is under the British rule. We don't have independence. We have to get independence first. But Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati said, no, no, nonsense. He said, Krishna consciousness is more important than any political adjustment. You cannot wait for some political adjustment. So he got the instruction right from the beginning, but he could not immediately take it out. He met his spiritual master first in 1922, and it was 1933 he got initiation, and it was 1966 he went to America. But the order of the instruction was never forgotten and gradually fulfilled the desire of the spiritual. Okay, Hare Krishna, Shri Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada.